<laughs> Good afternoon, Bluebirds. I am Ruby with Grace delivering your announcements. <laughs> um, we have a lot of birthdays today. Uh, yesterday we had none, and today, well, there are a lot. So, happy birthday to Miss Men's, Josh Green, Graham Lucky, Morgan Humphreys, Emily Heilman, Max McNay, and Lillian Hug. Yesterday we reminded some and informed everyone that Johnson Elementary will be moving their school to what is now referred to as Johnson Valley. Here are some more details. Yesterday, Johnson Valley was asked about, but to go in more depth, there's a new thing going on after spring break. If you don't know already, it's called Johnson Valley. Basically, Johnson is getting demolished and rebuilt to look super dope. But where will the little children go to be taught that dreams come true, you ask? Worry not! The pros have worked out a solution that should work for everyone. Cottages! They are going to use the learning cottages like Moyer did to house the tiny people and give them protein-packed education that they need. It is going to be super awkward at first, but I think everyone will get used to it. The main change that will occur is the time you come to school and the time you get out. What is that, you ask? A mere 15 minute difference. Johnson will start at our former schedule, and HMS will be starting and ending at the Johnson schedule. It's basically a flip flop of time. Kinda weird, but like I mentioned before, the pros have got this. For recess, Johnson will get 30 yards of the field and a little bit of concrete space to enjoy their time outside. That about sums it all up. Uses information well and have a good spring break. Uh, here is an idea Ms. Trimbach and the sixth, grader, sixth grade leadership team had and they came up with it for our entire school. She thought it would be so cool if we welcomed the Johnson kids who would be walking. Here is what she is thinking about. middle schoolers, I was wondering if you would like to give the Johnson kids a warm welcome on their very first day when we come back on our first day from spring break. So they're going to be walking across the football field and if you would like to get here early, maybe 7.30, some of you guys are early drop-offs, we can line the football field. They start at 7.45 and we will start at 8.15. If you're interested, be on out there. Let's give them a warm greeting. Remember, on April 8th around 7.30, you should come to the football field and support the Johnson kids by giving them high fives. If you want to greet the elementary kids with a high five, get here at normal time on April 8th and head outside to give the Johnson kids a high five. This is really a great idea and a great way to welcome them and make them feel comfortable in their new school. That was a good one. Yeah. Have you purchased your yearbook yet? If not, time is running out to purchase your yearbook. Capture your middle school memories and order your yearbook by April 30th. Go to jostinsyearbooks.com and purchase your yearbook all yearbook sales take place online. You have to go to justinsyearbooks.com to purchase your yearbook. Cost is $45. We are almost to the end of the month of March. After March comes April, specifically April 1st, which is April Fool's Day. What do you know about April Fool's Day? Here's a brief history of this holiday. All Fool's Day or April Fool's Day is a day of mysterious origin. No one really knows where it came from. Today we will talk about one of the theories historians have about this holiday. Most historians believe that April Fool's Day started in 1582 when France switched the Julian calendar with the Gregorian calendar under order of the Council of Trent. People who were slow to get the news did not know the start of the new year had been moved to January 1st, so they celebrated all throughout the last week of March until April 1st. This made April 1st the butt of all jokes. Pranks that people would pull back then would be placing a paper fish on others' backs. These fishes were called poison de avre, which means April fish. These fishes symbolize people who were gullible and easy to prank. Two of the most famous pranks were, in 1996, Taco Bell announced they had bought the naming rights to the Liberty Bell, and from now on it would be known as the Taco Liberty Bell. This outraged U.S. citizens until they learned that it wasn't true. They would jam Taco Bell's phone lines complaining. 
The second most infamous prank was in 1915, where a French World War I pilot flew over the German lines and dropped a large object that looked like a bomb. Once the large object fell out of the sky and did not explode, the German soldiers went to check it out. Once they had inspected it, they found it was a football with a note attached. The note saying, April Fools. Have fun on April Fools Day, Bluebirds, and see how many people you can prank. Have fun on April 1st. Maybe you will play a harmless prank on some of your family members or friends. When we return from spring break, the NCAA championship game will be taking place. So before we go to lunch, here is our final bit of the NCAA trivia. Who won the first ever men's Division I championship? A. Oregon, B. UCLA, C. Kansas, or D. Iowa State? The answer is A, Oregon. Oregon won the first ever men's national championship in 1939. They played Ohio State and won 46 to 33. Oregon has never won a national championship since then. For lunch today, we will be having hot dogs, baked beans, potato chips, and pancakes. The alternate is cheese pizza. Remember, you can always fix yourself a salad or add fresh fruit to your lunch. <laughs> now for... Wait, is that you? I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. Now for today's quote of the day. Today's quote of the day is, only you can change your life. No one can do it for you. Grace, will you change my life? No. <laughs> do it yourself. I'll try. Remember, when we come back on Monday, April 8th, school will start at 8.15. Have a wonderful spring break, Bluebirds.